Hello and welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in France for his two day visit. He received a rousing welcome by the Indian diaspora. The Prime Minister is scheduled to take part in the Bastille Day celebrations on the 14th of July as the guest of honor. India will also have its tri services contingent joining French forces in the parade. During his two day visit, the Prime Minister will hold discussions with French President Emmanuel Macron and other French dignitaries. He's also said to interact with the Indian community and top CEOs in France. In his departure statement, Prime Minister Modi expressed confidence that his visit to France will boost bilateral partnership between the two countries. And joining us now to take this forward, our former ambassador Rakesh Sood, who's been our ambassador to France, and also Captain D.K. Sharma, former spokesperson for the Indian Navy. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, gentlemen. Uh, ambassador Sood, if I can begin with you. The areas of convergences for India and France as the two leaders meet this time around. Parikshit, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. As you know, the France was the first country with which India signed a strategic partnership that was in 1998. So this marks 25 years of the strategic partnership. When it began, there were three pillars. These were uh, essentially nuclear, space, and defense. Later on, counterterrorism was added. Later on, uh, the other areas got added, particularly climate change. Uh, Prime Minister Modi was there and during the COP21 in Paris when the two leaders launched the International Solar Alliance. Since then, there have been areas of cooperation in smart cities, urbanization, urban transportation, water management, and a host of other areas. Uh, so this time, it is a special occasion. The last time India was the chief guest at the Bastille Day Parade was in 2009, when Dr. Manmohan Singh was invited as the chief guest. At that time also, we had an Indian contingent marking down, marching down the Champs-Élysées. This time, it will be accompanied uh, by three Rafale aircraft um, out of the 36 that we have purchased uh, from France. Naturally, the agenda will be a full agenda. There is a host of bilateral issues that will be discussed. Some agreements will be announced. And there are also a number of global uh, developments, the war in Ukraine, Indo-Pacific, China's uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, aggression since 2020 on our line of actual control. So all of these will be issues that will be uh, subject of discussion between the two leaders when they meet. Right. Right. Uh, uh, thank you for putting all of that into context. A very important partnership from a defense point of view as well. And uh, let's start off with the Deal for 26 Rafale Marine Aircraft, Captain Sharma, which has been approved by the Defence Acquisition Council. The pricing, it is said, will be negotiated as a first step, along with delivery timelines, setting up of MRO facilities. Give us a sense of how this deal will proceed and what could be the pricing, possibly, if we look at comparisons with other countries who've bought this aircraft recently. Good evening, Parikshit. Thank you for calling me and good evening, sir. Let me tell you, this is a, a, a path-breaking kind of a deal which has happened because, you see, when we started making the carrier, that is uh, somewhere in 2007, 2008, 2009, the keel was laid and then the, the work started. And you see, last year, October 22, the Prime Minister himself commissioned INS Vikrant. Now, the moot point is, what are the aircraft going to be on top? So there were two OEMs, everybody knows that, Boeing and the Saw Aviation. They had their F-18s, these guys had the Rafale. But let me tell you, as per my sources and my knowledge and my understanding, both the aircraft did well, but Rafale is an aircraft which is much, much more reliable. As they say in the technical terms, the mean time between failures, MPBF of Rafale Marine, is very, very less, which means that the aircraft is available to you almost every time, 100% availability. Plus, the trials which happened in Goa, the way they were, uh, the QRs of the Indian Navy were met. I, I have been made to understand 
that nothing could have been better. Plus, we have uh, the Rafal in our inventory already with the Indian Air Force. So there is 70% commonality. So MRO is there, there is, and there is a provision. Plus, all these things which Parikshit you're saying, this is the first step. You see, the day before yesterday, the Defense Procurement Board had just given a green. Today, it was brought up into the Defense Acquisition Council, which means that the AON has been granted. Now, after this, it's uh, uh, let's be very clear, it's a government-to-government -government sale. So there is no way any shortcut can be taken. And as I understand, a lot of uh, negotiations will happen, commercial negotiations, technical negotiations, committees will be formed, and the best price, whatever it may be. And uh, uh, that will be arrived at. And let me tell you, these kind of assets are very, very far and few, and much required for the Indian Navy with the kind of mm. geostrategic environment we have in our backyard, in the IOR. We have a carrier with no aircraft, and uh, you all know what is the kind of you know teething troubles we have with the MiG-29s. Of course, they are already flying from Vikram, and we are also getting the LCA Navy up and running. Right. But the actual weapon for an aircraft carrier is going to be Rafale. So a huge, huge, huge thing is happening. And let me tell you, it's not uh, that only this is happening. Mm. If you see in the last 10 years, starting from the PA ties, to the Rafals, to the Chinooks, to Apaches, to the Predator deal, which has just been signed in the last visit of the Prime Minister, and now this. Mm. Another big thing which we are missing out is the Scorpions, the three boats which are going to be now, uh, mm. you know, made in the DPSU Mazagon docks. You see, our inventory of submarines mm. is of late 80s. After that, the boats have already done their duty for almost 30 plus years. And you know it, the last CCS for clearing the boats was in 1998-99, where a submarine building program was approved by the government, in which it was approved that in the next 30 years, we'll make 24 boats. Out of that, I must inform, only six have been made till to date, which are the Scorpions. Now we are going in for Project 75 India, hmm. which is a, a betterment to the previous project in which we are looking at AIP plugs, better stealth, and you know the the sub launch uh, sub launch cruise missile. Hmm. All these requirements are there, which were not there for the Project right. 75, which is the Scorpions. Hmm. So there is a time gap. Now, how do you fill in that time hmm. gap? And I'm so glad, so happy that the government has addressed that issue, hmm. though a bit late in the day, but. Hmm. These three boats, hmm. they will be made. Hmm. Of course, the older boats will be paid off eventually. And this is how we need to be maintaining our hmm. uh, the, the right. minimum, minimum assets which are required to safeguard our interest in IOR. Right. Those are very important points. Thank you for explaining the criticality of both the Scorpion submarine deal and the Rafale deal. Coming back to you, Ambassador Sood, uh, what does this indicate about the deepening of our defense partnership? Uh, there is also a discussion on co-development of jet engines for the AMCA program, co-development of helicopter engines as well. Uh, how do you think this visit will take forward the India-France relationship from just a buyer-seller relationship? Well, I think that uh, Safran has been working with HAL for many years on uh, development of an engine. We have purchased in the past uh, helicopters, you know, the Alouette and the Alis from France. Uh, we have indigenized them. We now have our own uh, helicopter program. We produce the Truva. We want to expand it and make, make it available in uh, different formations. There's the advanced light helicopter. And I think that uh, whether we... Uh, we want to take the existing cooperation with uh, Safran, which is the French uh, aircraft and helicopter engine maker, to the next stage. And uh, I don't know whether we will sign for the aircraft engine or 
the helicopter engine or both. That is something which we will see once the meetings take place and uh, the agreements become public. However, defense is not, uh, I think, going to be the only thing. I think we will probably see some announcements in the field of space cooperation. France has been an old partner uh, mm. in the field of space right from the 1970s onwards. And uh, so that is an area where we could probably see some developments or announcements. A third area would well be uh, right. in the field of people-to-people uh, -people connect. Because one thing, you know, we have seen a boost in Indian students going to France for higher education. It used to be something like mm. about uh, 3,000 a right. year. The idea was to take it up to 10,000 by 2025. I understand that that target has already been crossed. Mm. Now people are looking at increasing it to about 20,000 Indian students, um, you know, maybe over the next five years or so. Let's not forget that our private That's sector suit. has also been extremely active. If you look at uh, the orders that have been placed with Airbus by Air India and Indigo together, these account mm. for 750 aircraft mm. during the last month. So there is a fair bit of activity that is right. taking Those place are big in the commercial space as well, as well as the people-to-people yes. people contact. Ambassador Sood, I... I would like to ask you about the cooperation in the nuclear sector uh, when it comes to civil nuclear cooperation, especially on the Jetapur nuclear power plant. What are some of the roadblocks that the two sides will try and ease out? Uh, we heard the foreign secretary yesterday saying that techno-commercial aspects of the deal have to be looked at. Uh, what are some of the uh, pending issues related to Jetapur nuclear power plant that need to be addressed and may be done during this visit? Uh, you know... It's a bit of a pity that uh, although the Jaitapur nuclear cooperation, civil nuclear cooperation agreement was one of the first to be signed after the NSG waiver was granted to India in 2008, the agreement related to six 1,600 megawatt, uh, each react, six reactors, each 1,600 megawatts, this is the EPR. However, part of the delay was due to the fact that Ariba, the company that was manufacturing these reactors, went into bankruptcy. Its nuclear business was taken over by EDF, Electricité de France, and that obviously led to delays in some of our negotiations. Meanwhile, the nuclear liability law that was passed in 2010 mm. has also led to enormous amount of delays, not just uh, with our uh, negotiations with uh, mm. France, but also with our own indigenous program. In fact, mm. since in the last uh, okay. 12 years, there is only one single indigenous reactor that has come on stream. The only two other reactors that have come on stream are the Russian reactors, Kudan Kulam 1 and 2. So when we talk of techno-commercial, I think what we are looking at is also how do we address some of the questions that the French have about the liability laws, because we also wanted to shift the liability from the operator, which was earlier the case, to also the vendor, possibly the supplier. Now, how does that, how does that actually translate? We have set up an insurance pool. I don't know if the French are happy with the arrangements that we have worked out, but those will be some of the complex negotiations. Okay. I hope that that is a deal that is that All has right. been I'll long pending, question. and I hope that the two two leaders can push it forward now. All right. Uh, let's see if there's any progress on that, as you're saying, Ambassador Sood. Final question to uh, Captain Sharma. Captain Sharma, today the DAC has also cleared guidelines on the levels of indigenization in all capital acquisitions. What is the kind of indigenization levels uh, or tech transfer or setting up of a local supply chain that we would be looking at with both the new Scorpion deal and the Rafale Marine deal. Okay, Parikshit, let me tell you that uh, we have been on to the Project 75, that is the Scorpions, for the last 10 years, or more than that. There were initial hiccups, but uh, we have learned our lessons. And now the 
Our own uh, logistics is very robust. There are many, many MSMEs which have been, you know, brought in and have been encouraged to supply the spare parts and other machinery which are of international standards, the mill standards. So it's a very, very positive move. And also the indigenous IC, which is called the IC, indigenous content, is increasing by the R. The import dependency is going down. And similar, I can see when the MRO for the Rafale comes up. Obviously, there are already two squadrons of uh, mm. Rafales with okay. us, one on the east and one on the west. There is a system which has been set up for the maintenance and repair of all these aircraft. So another 26 will join. And I'm telling you the airframe and other things, apart from some modifications which have been done for the Indian Navy, for example, the hook, the arrestor hook and other strengthening of the you know landing gear and all because this right. aircraft comes with a solid thud on the aircraft, uh, on the deck and lands but a lot of things are common 70% things are common that is what i have been made to understand so we are going to reap huge advantage if we get this had there been any other choice hmm. we would have had to you know look for all these things all over again but uh, this is a clear win win in my opinion okay and uh, that is where uh, the whole All right. ecosystem is going to gain. So whether you talk about the All right. We've run out the of time. labor, the people who are working in MDL, or the people who are there with the already existing MRO, all this is going to be hugely uh, supporting the cause of Atmanir Bharta, generating the kind of uh, you know employment right. and uh, pulling back the resources into the country. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Captain D.K. Sharma, Ambassador Sood, for joining us, giving us a perspective on the deals that are possible during the Prime Minister's visit to France and meeting with President Macron. We're going to take a short break here on News Center, but don't go anywhere. Luxury car maker BMW all set to launch the highly anticipated facelifted version of the iconic X5 SUV. A special discussion with Vikram Pawa, President of BMW India, on the company's latest offering.